joined now from uh, Sydney by HSBC's Chief Australia Economist, Paul Blocks. And Paul, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, well, I've got to ask you first of all, this is uh, just a, generally a shot across the bows, wasn't it, from uh, the Treasurer? Was it just a shot across the bows? No, I think it, it is going to have a genuine effect on the economy. The key thing to keep in mind, though, is it's going to be temporary. And, in fact, we already have partial indicators that suggest that the economy has started to recover from, 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 the, from the floods quite strongly. And uh, the, it, it is really history that we get this week. We get a GDP number for the first quarter, which we expect to be weak, but then we expect to bounce back after that. So the Reserve Bank will actually look through these, won't they, these numbers? They certainly will, and what they've flagged is that they, although the production numbers will be weak, so coal production fell in particular, they're going to be watching the domestic demand numbers. They're going to be watching what's going on with domestic demand, which we expect to be fairly solid still. The labour market was fairly unaffected by the floods, and of course the economy will get a boost from the floods when there's rebuilding that takes place, which we, as I say, have already started to see signs that that's gotten started. Uh, some people are saying that it's actually the state uh, of employment which is going to be actually key and not these uh, growth numbers. What's your view? That's certainly our view as well. Uh, the, the RBA will be watching the employment numbers most carefully. Of course, we saw the numbers fall in April, but we think that was partly statistical. Uh, but the labour market looks as though it's fairly tight and we expect the unemployment rate to continue to fall. That will be what the Reserve Bank's watching when they're setting policy. Well, that, of course, leads us on to, well, is there going to be inflation in the pipeline as a result of uh, fuller employment? Well, we certainly think that there, there will be, uh, that inflation has troughed and that we're likely to see inflation pick up from here. And indeed, we're, we're forecasting that inflation rises to above the Reserve Bank's comfort zone by the end of the year. And at the same time, in response to the fact that inflation is rising, the Reserve Bank will need to lift interest rates. We have in mind that the next move will be August or July and uh, that there will be two moves before the end of the year. Do you think it will turn uh, the RBA a bit more hawkish? I think the RBA is, is very wary about the previous episode when inflation picked up too much and got above its comfort zone and the fact that that happened and they had to really aggressively lift interest rates in order to slow it down is something that's making them wary this time round and, and potentially making them more hawkish about their rate moves. What is your biggest concern uh, for the Australian economy right now, Paul? I think the biggest concern is, is that inflation picks up too much. Uh, we, we have an outlook that looks very strong in terms of the mining investment boom that's going on. At the same time, we have a lot of supply constraints in the economy. We haven't been building enough houses. We haven't been building enough commercial buildings, potentially. And we certainly haven't been building enough electricity generation capacity. These are all things that are putting upward pressure on inflation as the economy picks up. So the biggest concern is that inflation picks up too much. And at, at, some, at some point, they really need to slam the brakes on to slow the economy down. So you're saying, uh, in effect, that uh, inflation is actually being structurally built there? It's certainly part of the story, and it does make it a much more challenging environment for monetary policy because part of the story is supply constraints, and the only thing that monetary policy can do is slow down demand in response. And in fact, in Australia, demand is actually being driven by a sector that isn't interest rate sensitive. It's being driven by the mining sector, which is driven by commodity prices. So the Reserve Bank has quite a hard task ahead of them. They have to slow down the part of the economy that isn't actually that strong right now in order to contain inflation that's being driven by something they can't control particularly well. And how would you do that? I mean, of course, this is a two-speed economy, isn't it, as, as you just alluded to? I think that's right. That's certainly the simplest way to think about the thing I've just described, is that you have the mining investment boom going on. It is, it is going gangbusters. It is, it is a massive mining investment boom that's playing out over the next couple of years. And the rest of the economy needs to grow more slowly in order to make room for it. And the only way the Reserve Bank can control inflation is to keep that rest of the economy under control. Let's just go across uh, the sea there and go to New Zealand. Uh, you know, record high for the uh, New Zealand dollar, as we saw with the Aussie dollar lately. I mean, uh, this down to a trade surplus here, looking in good shape, or you know, with of course rebuilding, etc. After the devastation of Christchurch, what sort of uh, places is the New Zealand economy in? 
Well, we think that the New Zealand, reco New Zealand economy is, is, is on recovery. In fact, we think that the, the part that isn't Canterbury, the part that wasn't affected by the, the earthquake, was actually on a, on a bit of a recovery before the earthquake actually hit, and that that's continued. Of course, in the second half of this year, you'll start to also see the flood, uh, sorry, the, the earthquake reconstruction also boosting the economy. So, so overall, we, we actually think the growth is starting to pick up, and, and we're, we're likely to see it pick up in the second half and see the RBNZ looking to lift rates before the end of the year. Paul Blogson, thanks a lot for that. Paul Blogson is uh, the Chief Economist uh, for Australia at HSBC.